our body's immune system protects us from all kind of harmful pathogens and that's why we can compare our immune system to the defense system of our country which protects us at all cost but sometimes things go wrong and in order to prevent any kind of auto reactive or self destructive events our immune system has tolerance mechanism which is a safeguard mechanism protecting our body from auto reactive cells and autoimmunity but still things can go wrong the cells can evade that kind of mechanisms and there could be a low to moderate consequence which might lead to allergy rashes skin blemishes etc it can also have chronic consequences like autoimmune disorders now hypersensitivity is a specific term which is kind of explaining that the immune system is overreacting let's say we personify the immune system it's a healthy person let's say now in response to antigen when this immune system overreacts this situation is now known as hypersensitivity and it's quite dangerous to the body right few things we should question before understanding hypersensitivity now when the cells are auto reactive and when the cells are over sensitive towards uh, the pathogens or antigens then that could cause several danger signals to the body now this threat that is posed to the body could has different timeline some threats or consequence could be immediate some could be delayed we should ask that what are the mediators of hypersensitivity at the level of cell or molecules so let's just introduce all the types of hypersensitivity that body can face there is type 1 hypersensitivity which is also known as allergy and it is mainly mediated by allergens and ige and the mast cells are the key culprit of this pathway now mast cells bind to ige because it has ige receptor and it can degranulate and produce many many peptides like histamines which would cause a lot of harmful consequences on the body then type 2 hypersensitivity is basically igg mediated and this is also dependent upon antibodies so it's a antibody mediated type 2 hypersensitivity reaction it leads to destruction of the cells by complement fixation or antibody dependent cytotoxicity the type 3 hypersensitivity is due to immune complexes where immune complexes deposit in several places and leads to hypersensitive response or inflammatory response so type 1 type 2 and type 3 hypersensitivity both i mean all of these involves to some extent antigen antibody interactions and all of these has another thing common which is their occurrence is immediate so it's a immediate consequence of the overreactive or oversensitive immune system there is another kind of hypersensitivity which is type 4 also known as delayed hypersensitivity delayed hypersensitivity takes time to occur and it involves specific subpopulation of t helper cells also known as th1 cells and unlike any other hypersensitive response it involves no antibody response no in antibody mediated responses and it only involves t cells and in this video we will learn about all of these in a bird side view but let's first try to understand that how people figure out about this hypersensitive re reaction what was the first evidence so it turns out that there are two french scientists paul portier and charles richet who found that the people who are taking bath in mediterranean sea are often getting uh, bitten by jellyfish now the jellyfish sting is pretty painful right so they wanted to get a cure of jellyfish pain, uh, jellyfish sting so what they used to do is isolate uh, jellyfish toxin and that toxin is then injected to a dog now these toxin would 
possibly produce antibodies if it's a proteinaceous toxin it would produce antibodies against this uh, this particular toxin so they expected when this dog is given a booster dose for the second time then the dog would be totally immune because it has all the necessary antibodies to encounter that toxin right but something came as a surprise instead of getting immune to that situation the dog showed diarrhea vomiting and eventually he died then charles richard called this oversensitive and overreactive situation as anaphylaxis and this was the first evidence of hypersensitivity and now we know this kind of situation is a delayed hypersensitivity let's talk about first about type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so let's say this particular boy gives this girl a rose but along with this rose there were pollen grains from other flowers which this girl was allergic to and the girl didn't knew that so the girl sniffs that rose and with that beautiful smell of the rose allergens enter her nasal cavity now inside the nasal cavity under the respiratory epithelia these allergens get in and then that they are detected by antigen presenting cells b cells etc now the b cells which detect them and eventually they would display their antigens onto t t helper cells activates these b cells and what would happen is these b cells would differentiate into plasma cells and the plasma cells would secrete ige and ige is the key mediator of type 1 hypersensitivity or allergic reactions these ige antibodies can bind to the fc receptors present on the mast cells and prime these mast cells now these mast cells become sensitized and whenever there is a second exposure they degranulate and the degranulation of the mast cells has consequences it can lead to smooth muscle constriction vasodilation bronchoconstriction and glandular secretion and several consequences it could have so this is all about type 1 hypersensitivity and few people are always more prone to allergy because they have more ige anti uh, antibodies inherently and this kind of situation is known as atopia now this is not so detailed information about type 1 hypersensitivity so if you want to know more about it i have a separate video and the link is at the end screen let's talk about type 2 hypersensitivity for a moment type 2 hypersensitivity is often uh, associated with blood transfusion or mismatch transfusion we all know we have four type of blood groups blood group a b ab and blood group o blood group a has a antigen on its surface and in the serum we have anti b antibodies whereas in case of blood group b we have anti a antibody in the serum and antigen b in the surface blood group ab has both the antigens present on the surface but no serum in the body and no uh, antibodies in the serum now blood group o has anti a and anti b both type of antibodies in their serum but no antigens on the surface now let's imagine that a person with blood group a is donating blood to a person with blood group b and total di disaster would happen so blood group a has a antigen and blood group b has b antigen and both has the reciprocal antibodies for it so whenever the blood group uh of the person who which has a like blood group a it has the anti b antibody right so now anti b antibodies would bind to this b antigen and this b antigen is displayed on the surface of the blood because it it has a blood transfusion from a, a person who is b positive now two things could happen one is complement mediated lysis of these rbcs second since these antibodies uh, fc region is detected by macrophages and many other cells which has their fc receptor they could undergo antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity and eventually it would lead to destruction of the rbc same situation 
of type 2 hypersensitivity occurs during erythroblastosis fetalis, which is a fetal hemolysis problem. In this situation, mother's body produce anti-RH antibody. Now, these anti-RH antibody can move into the uh, move through the placenta, get into the embryo, and it can cause hemolysis and eventually death of this embryo. So these are bad consequences of type 2 hypersensitive reaction. Now in order to understand type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, we take a simple example. Let's say a snake has bitten you in the leg. Now the snake toxin or the snake venom is now inside your bloodstream. You need a treatment, right? And the treatment for this is an antiserum. Now this antiserum is generally generated inside a horse or a rabbit which is bitten by the same snake earlier. So it is expected that their serum would have the necessary antibody against this snake venom, right? Now when you inject it, these antibody goes inside the bloodstream, interacts with the snake venom or snake toxin and kind of neutralize it. But one thing is different because the antibody which we inject is produced in the different species and it is foreign to our body, right? So our body would detect this as an antigen. Our body would detect it as a foreign substance. So our body would produce antibody against it and which would eventually be detected by macrophages or neutrophils which are having FC receptors and they would try to clear that up. But there are too, when there is too much production of these clumps or too much production of these antigen antibody complexes, it can also be deposited onto the blood capillary or blood vessel wall. Now, this would bring about several changes. Neutrophils could be attracted inside the blood vessels and they could degranulate, which would lead to vasodilation and sometimes even damage of the uh, artery or the capillary wall, which could be detrimental and lead to. Uh, blood clotting in several region. So this was like type 3 hypersensitivity reaction which mostly involves complement fixation and like antigen and antibody complex. Let's talk about type 4 hypersensitivity which is a delayed type hypersensitivity. Let's say a person is uh, exposed to poison oak or poison ivy. This poison ivy has a compound called urishol. This urisol would go inside the skin and it would be detected by the macrophages, resident macrophages there. And these resident macrophages would eventually activate T cells and these T cells would ultimately differentiate into Th1 cells which are inflammatory. Now when there is a second exposure, the response is like amplified. There are several T cells which are activated faster and then they would secrete all sort of inflammatory cytokines and chemokines which would attract more immune cells toward the site of exposure and that would lead to a elevated response and that leads to the consequences of type 4 hypersensitive reaction so this video was overall an overview of all the hypersensitivity reaction in a nutshell but if you want detailed explanation of all of these i have the link at the end of uh, this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you